Good morning, everybody. God bless you all. Good morning. We're praising God this morning for you all who are uh, joining us this morning. We're honored of God to be able to come into your, as I say all the time, into your homes, to your cars, to your grocery stores, shopping carts, into your ears when you got your bee heads on, like uh, <laughs> my wife likes to say about power beats, if you got your bee heads on or you got your AirPods in your ear, well, however it is that you're coming and joining the call or joining this video or seeing this later even on YouTube, however it is you are seeing this media and this stream and this word this morning or to the, in the evening, however you're seeing it, we say welcome to you. We bless God for you. Uh, this is uh, Spreading the Word Worship Center's uh, Sunday uh, celebration time of sharing uh, the word on today. Uh, before we get into the word of God, I want to again uh, tell you a little bit about Spreading the Word Worship Center. We are the church where everyone is someone and Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, then also, I want to share with you our core values. I say I, every time that I have a chance to do uh, teaching or uh, we come on for preaching, I want to be able to share with you the core values of spreading the word. You have to know why you're doing what you're doing, who you are, and what, what you're representing. And so that's why I consistently do that every time. That way there's never uh, I give, there's a reminder of, of what we're doing. We have four core values of spreading the word, and those four core values are wrapped up in four words. We are passionate about. We are passionate about. That's why you see me, uh, some people say I make a cup of coffee nervous because I am passionate about what I'm doing. You got to be passionate about what you're passionate about. All right, so we're passionate about four things at Spreading the Word. We're passionate about purpose, that is destiny and direction. We're passionate about loving, that is building relationships, horizontal and vertical. We are big into conflict resolution. We are going to tear down conflict. Where we're going to resolve it. We are not going to keep things going. That's what we say. Then three, we're passionate about giving. That's why we are a tithing church. We are a church that gives offering. We are a church that is big in missions and outreach. We are a church that's big in helping others uh, and, and helping different causes and kingdom causes and helping to fund kingdom projects to be able to advance the kingdom because it's not just about what we're doing, but we're also passionate about in giving of our time and also our talent. So we don't just hoard what we can do only for financial gain, but we give our, we volunteer our time, we give of our talent, and as we do those things, God continues to get the glory. And the last thing which, uh, which makes us be passionate about giving is that we're passionate about loving. We're passionate about loving, or learning, I should say. And since we're passionate about learning, we are uh, saying that we are uh, very on fire about Christian education. We're passionate and on fire about Bible study. And we're passionate about discipleship. So we are making disciples of men. And so that's what we do. And so like we say, our, 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 our mission is to spread the word of God by equipping men to be fishers of men. Saturating this world with the love of Jesus Christ. Changing lives, healing relationships, and bringing glory to God. So those are our core values. That is what our purpose is, and, and that is our, our motto here at Spreading the Word. So before we go into the Word of God, it gives me extreme pleasure on today. It gives me extreme pleasure on today. Uh, it, for some, of the, uh, We're going to be doing some special things over the next couple of weeks here at Spreading the Word, even in this virtual time of celebration, we're going to be doing some uh, things to be able to honor and to be able to um, celebrate what God has allowed us to accomplish. And, uh, you know, in, in regular times, in conventional times, and, and which was which was so uh, 2019, and, and so 2019, we would be celebrating our church anniversary on today. But, of course, we know we are in a digital, virtual world at, at this moment in time, and there'll be plenty of time to celebrate all together uh, later this year prayerfully and different things as we're continuing to go on. But it brings me extreme pleasure today to be able to introduce our guest speaker 
on this day. This Our guest speaker on this day is a fantabulous woman of God. She is a remarkable, remarkable, remarkable woman. If I wasn't married, and she wasn't married, I would date her. I would come, I would be going hard in the paint, try, trying to uh, uh, get her to be my girlfriend. And I'm still trying to get her to be my girlfriend, even after 24 years of being married to her. And so I'm thankful. And like I said, well, I'm talking with passion is about loving. And so, we're, and so I'm, I'm grateful and honored to be able to bring the executive pastor of Spreading the Word Worship Center to bring, be able to bring the last message of this year in our church's history. Uh, there's none other than Pastor, First Lady, Apostle Regina Holiday. So I'm going to ask her to come. She's going to give us a word of God on today. God bless you. I'm going to, I'm going to try to treat you like you like you are uh, uh, like, you're, like, you're, like you're a guest and you're a preacher. So come on and help us today, uh, Apostle Regina, and, and, and bless us today with the Amen. word. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Apostle. Got a little concerned when you started saying you would date her if you weren't married. But, okay. <laughs> I get you. I get you. I probably would date you too if I wasn't married. You probably. Oh my God. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> Well, well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Welcome again. This is Spreading the Word Worship Center, and I'm honored. I know you guys don't see me in front of the camera so much. Normally, I'm behind the camera helping Apostle to do what he, he has to do, and I'm honored to be before you guys on today. I'm not going to belabor the time. I'm going to go right into the Word. I just want to honor the Lord on today. I give honor to God because he's the head of my life. Can I get a wave or amen if the Lord is the head of your life on today? We just praise God for being God. Anybody grateful that God is God in your life? If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I shudder to think where I would be. So I'm grateful to the Lord and I honor him on today. I give honor to my apostle, my husband, my boo, my boyfriend, Apostle Jeff. I praise God for him and I praise God for my spreading the word worship center family and I praise God for all of you today. I thank you for taking out time just to kind of stop by to hear what the Lord wants to say on today. I believe that there is a word from the Lord. I believe that the Lord has given me a word in my mouth and in my heart to share with you and as I always say if it's just one word, if it's just one phrase, if it's one sentence, there is something that the Lord wants you to get out of this message on today. So I'm not going to belabor the time. I want you to go with me or just follow along with me as I read into your hearing John chapter number five. And I'm going to start reading at verse number one. And I know you guys probably could kind of uh, quote this particular uh, verse of scripture verbatim because it's so familiar. It's such a familiar passage of scripture, but I'm just going to read it into your hearing and I'm going to go into giving you what the Lord has given me. Uh, the word of the Lord says in John chapter number five, verse number one, after this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in Hebrew tongue, Beth. Beth said, Beth Bethesda, I'm sorry, having five porches. And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Somebody say moving of the water. Moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after troubling of the water stepped in was made whole and whatsoever disease, of whatsoever disease he had. A certain man was there, which had an infirmity 30 and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Verse number 9 says, And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. So for a topic, I just want to ask you a question. 
And just put this in the comment box. What was the question? What was the question? What was the question? Just put that in a comment box for me, asking a question. What was the question? So let's just pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you today. We thank you, Lord God, for this time, God, to come before your throne of grace, God, to deliver the word that you have given me to deliver to your people. Father, I pray, Lord God, that the hearts of our people will be receptive of your word. Take these lips of clay and mold them and make them and shape them, God, to speak your oracles of life. God, you do your will. You stand up tall as I take my seat. Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do. I thank you for the hearts and the minds of your people that are going to be restored and encouraged on today. Bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. And so when somebody asks you a question, it's very important to understand what they are actually asking you before you can really answer the question. A lot of times, I think a question uh, that's asked in some instances can be misunderstood. A lot of times we don't understand the context of a question and when we don't really understand the context of the question that will cause us to give a, a erroneous or incorrect response. Not to, to question if you feel a certain kind of way, but sometimes there are questions that we can answer better if we knew the context or what exactly the person was asking. A question is a sentence or a phrase used to find out information. A lot of times when you ask a question, you want to reply, you want to respond. You're trying to get some information. It's a sentence or, or it's a request for information. It's, it requires an answer. So a question requires an answer. So there are many reasons, and I just want to give you a few reasons why people ask questions. Just generally, I can't get technical because there are numerous reasons why people ask questions. Sometimes we ask questions to get knowledge. You want to find out something that you don't know. Other times we ask questions to eliminate confusion. Sometimes you just have to ask the question to kind of calm things down, to get some clarity. Sometimes we ask the question to call someone to, to feel special. Have you ever asked a question or you uh, of somebody just to kind of make them feel important or special? Sometimes we are using a question to guide the conversation in the direction that we want to go in. Sometimes we talk to people and we have to kind of redirect the conversation because sometimes it gets off track. Sometimes we ask a question to enable a person to discover the answer for themselves. Have you ever had to do that? You know the answer to the, the, the question or the problem or you got the solution, but the other person don't quite know. Sometimes you might have to ask a question to dive, to allow that person to dive internally to begin to answer the question for themselves. Another reason that we might ask a question is to get a person's attention. You know, those questions that may knock your socks off or those questions that you may never, ever expect. Those are the kind of questions that get our attention. Sometimes we ask questions in the beginning of a relationship. And I wanted to share something, but I won't share. My, my, my husband asked me a question, or I asked him a question when we were dating. And, and he said something to me, and he knows what I'm talking about. So it's, it was the beginning of a relationship, so to speak. So another reason that we might ask questions is to alter or influence a person's viewpoint. Sometimes, again, we need to shift the viewpoint because maybe this person just don't quite see it. Maybe you got a revelation, and they really need to get this revelation in order to help them in their lives. So there are actually many different types of questions, but there's one specific one I'm just going to touch on a little bit, and that's a general question. And a general question, or a yes or no, uh, will require a yes or no response. These are common questions that can simply be answered with yes or no. With this type of question, you can simply respond again by just saying yes or no. Somebody just type in yes or no. And you can respond uh, sometimes even by giving uh, added information, like you may tap the question on to your answer. For example, if I ask you, do you like ice cream? You could simply say yes, or you could simply say no. Or you could say yes, I like ice cream, or no, I don't like ice cream. But general questions usually don't require, they don't always require a long, elaborate answer. When, when, uh, when this particular type of question is asked. So if we go back to our scripture for just a few minutes, even as I said, this is a very familiar passage of scripture. We know the story, the man at the pool of Bethesda, he was um, 
in this position for 38 long years. This pool was, uh, again, the scripture says, by the sheep market, and there was a large number. The scripture says the multitude hung out at this particular place. So there was a large number of people waiting there. So they had gotten to this place, and they were waiting. The scripture goes on to say that these people were, they were impotent. In other words, they were hopeless, they were powerless, they were helpless, and unable to take effective action in their own life. Anybody ever been there? You felt hopeless. You felt powerless in certain situations. You felt helpless and you sometimes felt unable to take effective action in your own life. Some of them were blind and some of them were paralyzed and some of them were wasting away. This pool was a place of possibilities. If you would just allow me some theological latitude, I, I, I can just envision uh, Lower Wacker Drive and all of these helpless, homeless people are there, but there is a place that they are uh, uh, over in the corner somewhere where all of them are gazing at and, and, and just trying to get to that place because they know that this is a place of possibilities. Even though they were on uh, these porches and a lot of them were in, in, in places of impossibility. So and, and, and how many times have, what, what did the woman with the issue of blood say, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know that I will be made whole. So I'm sure some of these people that were in hopeless, helpless, powerless situations felt like if I could just get to the pool of Bethesda, I know that when the water is troubled, I know that I can make it in and I know that my life is going to be changed. Again, this pool was a, a represented a place of possibilities. It wasn't enough for them to just be by the pool or on the porch. They had to be the first one to get in to the pool whenever the angel came to trouble the water. Many were so close, yet so far from their healing. Are there things in your life that you feel like you can reach out and touch it? It's so close, but it's yet so far away from you. I'm sure this is how some of those people felt in our scripture on today. The scripture goes on to say that there was a certain man there who had an infirmity again for, for 38 long years. And when I was preparing this message, I thought about my daughter. My daughter is 38 long years. She's 38 years old and I was 20 years old when I had her and I realized that she's been in my life longer than she has been out of my life. So, I, and I praise God for that, but the scripture says, it, it makes reference to 38 long years. 38 years is a long time, y'all. And, and it, 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 it refers to this man as a certain man. And, and, and that word certain just simply means identified, but not named. He was identified in the scripture, but he was not called by his name. So, one of the things in, in, in the topic of this sermon is simply what? was the question. What was the question? And we talked about questions and some type of questions and why we might ask the question. So even as Jesus asked this man, as he approached him at the pool of Bethesda, will you be made whole? So that's the question. If you asking me what is the question, what is the topic, what are we talking about today, I'm just going to simply say, what is the question? And then I'm going to tell you what the question is. Will you be made whole. Why would Jesus ask this man a question that seemed so obvious? You know, this man is sitting at this pool and, and he's been in this position for 38 long years. And, you know, coming up to a doctor or going to the doctor and, and you're going to the doctor is obvious why you're going to the doctor. You want to be healed. You want to be well. Whatever the issue is, you want the issue to be resolved. So it seems kind of funny that Jesus would ask the man, do you want to be whole? And kind of like going to the doctor and the doctor saying, do you want uh, me to help you with this problem? It's obvious. I, I drove here or I took the bus here. I came into your office. I paid my copay. It just seems obvious that I want your help, right? So, and, and, and Jesus asking this man this obvious question it wasn't so obvious. When someone has gone through something for a very, very long time, they can lose hope and even 
the desire to be better. Anybody ever been there? We're going to be honest today. Anybody ever been through something so long and, and it's been just overwhelming to you that you just feel like this is just how I am? There was a general question, but the answer would show Jesus exactly where this man was at. Even though Jesus already knew, not just physically, not just mentally, not just emotionally, not just spiritually, not just psychologically, but the totality of this man's being was wrapped up in the answer to this question. The question that Jesus asked him was probably to get knowledge on where this man was actually at. It was probably to eliminate confusion so that he would know that he could be healed. Jesus asked him, what do you want to be made well? And, 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 and it would just seem like, you know, why would he ask me a question that's very, very obvious to everybody that knows me, everybody that's around me? We're all here for the same reason. We all want to be made whole. So Jesus might have wanted to eliminate the confusion that was going on in the man's mind and, and give him some reassurance that this could actually happen. He probably asked him the question to make him realize that he saw him. The scripture says Jesus saw him lie. So Jesus saw him laying on his bed of affliction. He, and he, he might have asked the question to, to help him to realize, I see you. I see you out of everybody, the multitude of people that are at the pool or at the edge of the pool waiting for the angel to come and trouble the water. Jesus singled him out and said, I see you. And that's what I'm saying to you on today. The Lord wants you to know that he sees you. My God. So maybe he asked the question to guide the conversation in the direction that he wanted it to go in. Maybe he asked a question to enable him to discover answers within himself. Or maybe he just wanted to get his attention. Maybe he was trying to begin a relationship with this man. Because he didn't know who Jesus was because his response was, uh, Sir, I don't have a man. Sir. He wouldn't have referred to Jesus as sir if he knew who he was. Maybe Jesus asked him the question to alter or influence his viewpoint. So Jesus asked the man the question, and I ask you the question, will you be made whole? Will you be made whole? So I'm going to move on because I don't want to take too much time, but I want you to ponder and just put that in a comment a box for me, will I be made whole? Or put it this way, do I want to be made whole? Simply, that's a general question that requires a yes or a no answer. So another point that I want to make with the man being in the position that he was in for 38 long years, I'm sure he had acquired a victim mentality. I can be honest, I've been in that position uh, in my life before because of situations and circumstances that I had gone through. I had a victim mentality. I was, whoa, it's me and I'm pitiful and somebody come and rescue me and I can't help myself. Anybody ever been there today? We're being honest and we're being transparent. So the man had a victim mentality and a victim mentality is a acquired personality trait in which a person tends to recognize and consider themselves as a victim of negative actions or of others even if there is contrary evidence in such circumstance. Have you ever known somebody that always sees the glass half empty? I don't care how you try to encourage them. I don't care how much you point them to the facts. They will never see the glass half full. So that's a victim mentality. And, and, and some of us that, that see the glass as half full, we can find hope. In the smallest thing, my husband shared something with me today, and he said, I'm grateful. At least this thing is not because of that. So even though the thing might not be a good thing, he, he just reminded me that it may not be a good thing, but at least the cause of it is not because of that. So we have to find hope 
in the smallest thing when we're going through something and when we have been dealing with a situation for a very, very, very long time. He didn't realize that Jesus saw him. And that's part of our issue on today. We don't recognize that the Lord sees us. We don't realize that the Lord is with us in those situations because they went to the pool to wait. I'm sure they didn't play spades and big whist and Jim Rummy, maybe some backgammon. I'm sure they weren't doing all of that. They were waiting. And a lot of times when we have to wait, and we don't have anything else to occupy our minds with, it can be overwhelming. And a lot of times when you're going through physically, that begins to take your focus. That begins to cause you to be consumed with what you're going through. He was in a bad mindset after 38 long years. And, and guess what? When, when you have dealt with something for so long, it begins to be a stronghold. And the enemy begins to build up a fortress in your mind that locks you in and, 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 and makes you uh, believe that there's no way out. So, even as Jesus asked him the question, he said, Sir, I have no man. And even if I was to digress a little bit and I was to talk to the single women on today, and, and some of the single women might be making that statement, Lord, I don't have a man. But I digress. I digress. In other words, he didn't have anybody to help him. He said, I don't have anybody to help me. He said, everybody gets in front of me when the angel comes to trouble the water. And I just kind of visualized all of these multitudes of people when they, they, when they sense the angel and they see the troubling of the water. I can see those that were not Physically, maybe somebody had a mental issue or psychological, emotional issue that did not distort their physical ability. And this man was uh, hindered or he was limited physically. So there were those, I'm sure, in the multitude that was physically able to run. And as I, I visualize, I see this man dragging his legs. And I see him dragging and pulling himself to get closer to the pool. But I see others coming around him. Nobody stopped to say, brother, can I give you a hand? Brother, can I help you? I'll help you get to the edge, but I'm going to jump in before you. I'll help you to get close, but I'm not going to get you all the way there. You're going to have to do something for yourself. So maybe this man felt this way because he had this stronghold built up in his mind and he just didn't have any other way of thinking. He didn't know any other way to think or believe. So I want to ask you a question. Who got blessed before you? Who was it that got the blessing that you were praying for? Who was it that got healed as you were praying for them to be healed? Who was it that got the new house? Who was it that got what you've been waiting for for 38 long years? Who was it that got the husband and you still saying, Lord, I don't have a man? Who was it that got the very thing that you've been waiting on the Lord to manifest in your life? My last point today. One of the things I believe this man did, and I know you've heard it preached and you've heard it taught and you've heard it elaborated on in, in, in many different sectors, but he got comfortable while he was waiting. He got comfortable even as we do in our bad situations and in our circumstances. We have to recognize where we are. We have to recognize you know, what has caused not so much as us to be there, but what is causing us not to be able to get up and press forward. Have you gotten comfortable in your discomfort? Have you gotten comfortable in your dysfunction? Have you gotten comfortable, and Lord help me today, in that backslidden condition? Since we've been out of church and haven't been able to go to the physical building, have you gotten comfortable in the condition where you've allowed the enemy to take you back 
to a place that God wants to deliver you from? Have you gotten comfortable in that abusive relationship? Oh my God. Have you gotten comfortable or has the abnormal become your new normal because it's been so long? And I know some of y'all saying, preacher woman, you just don't understand. I've been dealing with this for such a long time and I've been smiling on the outside, but I've been crying down on the inside because I know I got to keep my face on. But when I go home, I'm crying and I'm in a place of discouragement because it's been such a long time. Have you gotten used to being stuck? I'm just asking you a question. Have you lost your desire to be whole because of the obstacles that are in front of you? Have you gotten used to being in the position of not being whole because of what is going to take you to partner with God to be healed? Have you gotten comfortable, Lord help us today, living outside of the will of God? Have you been in this state so long that wrong is right and right is wrong today? Have you allowed your mind not to be transformed by the word of God and you've taken on the, 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 the world's way of thinking because of your influences, because of your environment, because of these things that you feel like you don't have control over. How long has it been that you have dealt with the generational impotence, that you've dealt with the generational poverty when Jesus already said, I see you, when the Lord has already told you that I'm here, I see you. How long have you dealt with the generational sickness that was passed down from generation to generation to generation? How long have you dealt with the generational brokenness of depression and discouragement that have been passed down from generation to generation to generation? 38 long years. Somebody just put that in a comment. 38 long years. What was the question? What was the question again? Will you be made whole? Even with his excuses, his hopelessness, his victim mentality, being comfortable in his discomfort, him having no man, but he met a man, y'all. And I just want to let you know that there's a man that wants to make you whole on today. This impotent, helpless, hopeless, and powerless man met an omnipotent, all-powerful Jesus. I tell you, God already solved the problem. He already solved the issue. And as I come swiftly to my close, I don't want you to miss your season. I don't care how long you've been waiting. I don't care how hard it's gotten for you. I don't care who is being blessed with the very thing you've been believing God for a long time to manifest in your life. I come today to let you know that this is your set time. That your time has come for you to move out of the place of I can't help it into the place of wholeness. Will you be made whole? That's the question. What was the question again? Will you be made whole? Psalms 102 and 13 says, Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time of favor, the time to favor her. Yea, the set time has come. I just want to let you know that this is your time and this is your season to be made whole. This is the expected time that the Lord has allotted for you to come out of some things. God is saying today, I don't care how long it's been. It's, for some of you, it's been a year. For some of you, it's been a month. Some of you, it's been 5, 10, 20, 30, 40 years that you have been waiting, that you have been carrying the burden of this overwhelming situation that God wants you to give over to him. There is a set time for the favor of the Lord to manifest in your life. So take up your bed and walk. That's what I command you on today.
day, the man told Jesus, I don't have a man. Every time the water is troubled, somebody comes and get in front of me and I just can't help myself. I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this, but Jesus' response to the man was, take up your bed. He told him to carry what has been carrying you. And he didn't just tell him to carry what was been carrying him, but he said, get up and walk. So that's what I command you on today, and that's the question. Get up and walk. Will you be made whole? If you're going to be made whole in this season, because this is your season, we've been isolated and we've been uh, secluded for a long time as we are gradually opening up ourselves to congregate and to be socially active again, there are some things that God wanted this specific time in your life to allow you to come out of. There are some things that God is, is giving us to emerge into, but there are some specific things in your life that God has allotted this time to allow you to break away from. So this is your set time for the favor of the Lord to manifest in your life. This is a word for you today from the Lord. Again, I say, take up your bed. What is the thing that has been carrying you? The Lord is saying today that regardless of how long it's been, it's time for you to take it up. It's time for you to begin to walk. He said, the, the water may be troubled, but I don't need a water to be troubled for me to manifest my healing and my deliverance in your life on today. You've been through too much. 38 years is a long time to sit in one spot or to deal with an infirmity, to deal with an issue that is beyond your control, an issue that has caused you to be powerless in a certain area of your life. You've been through too much. Come on, put that in there. I've been through too much. So God wants you to get up from the negative relationship that you have allowed yourself to deal with because you felt like this is all I got. If I don't have this, I have nothing. God wants me to speak to you today and say there is something better, but you'll never get to your something better if you don't walk out of the situation that you're in now. God wants you to get up from that pity party. I don't have a man. I'm just so sad. The victim mentality. God is saying it's time for you to see the glass as half full. The glass is not half empty. You got breath in your body. And God is saying, I know it's been a long time, but I want you to be able to understand who Jesus is. This man, this man, this man. I just want to read this. And in, in the same chapter, John chapter number 5, verse number 14, it says, Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus. He didn't know who Jesus was when Jesus came to him at the pool. But as he went into the temple and the Jews began to ask him, who healed you on the Sabbath? Because they were trying to get Jesus. But the man told him after Jesus came and said, you're healed. Go and sin no more. They, he went back to tell the Jews, oh, I know who it was now. And some of you guys don't recognize your Savior. Some of you don't recognize your Lord because so many things have gotten into your mind. So many things have caused the Lord to be distorted in your heart because you feel like if a man hurt me, if my relationships always get sabotaged, then God could not love me the way that he, that any man could ever love me. But I come to let you know that Jesus is not a man that he should lie, or our God is not a man that he should lie, but he came to set you free on today. If you want to be liberated, I, I just want you to do this for me. I know you're at home. I know you're probably in your pajamas, and I know you probably got your coffee and all this other stuff, but I want you to stand up. And I just want you to stand up. Come on, stand up with me and just begin to walk around your house. Just walk around. Just take a few steps. Come on, because you're walking out of some stuff. Come on, get that thing on your mind that you've been carrying. And God is saying as you carry it, he's transferring and reversing some things in your life. Come on, I know y'all can't clap, but give me some claps in the comment box. Put your hands together and give the Lord some praise. But I want to tell you, I want to tell you that it's time for you to get up from that lack. It's time for you.
you to get up from the poverty mentality. Why can't you have more than enough? Oh my God. Why do you have to always struggle? Why do you always have to be the one robbing Peter to pay Paul? Because you serve a God that sees you. And if he sees you and you know who he is, I tell you, your time has come. This is your set time to walk out of some stuff. Walk into your peace. Come on, y'all. Walk into the joy of the Lord today. Walk into your destiny. Walk into your ability to carry the very thing that has been carrying you. You got to walk into your abundance. You got to walk into your season. The Lord is there. And this is your season. Don't let nobody tell you that you got to wait. Don't let nobody tell you after all the hell that you've been through that you got to stay right where you are. God says this is your season and this is your time to move out. But you got to do something. You got to answer the question. Will you be made whole? And I'll share this in my closing. When, when I wrote my book in 2011, this is the, the very thing God asked me. Will you be made whole? And I, I said the same thing I said in this sermon. Wow, that's a weird question. God, you know my heart. Why would you ask me that? But God knew that I had be, be, become comfortable in my discomfort. And there's many of you guys out there that hear me talking today, and I'm talking to you. You've gotten comfortable in your dysfunction or in your discomfort. You've gotten comfortable in a place that God didn't intend for you to get comfortable in. And there are, are things that happen when you begin to agree with the adversary. You become woven together. Two can walk together when they agree. And you become woven with the adversary. And God said, I want to untangle you. I want to set you free. But it's going to take you being able to realize and recognize, firstly, that you deserve to be here. You don't deserve to be in the place that you're in. But you got to do something. You got to begin to believe that God wants to do it. I feel in my spirit that some of y'all don't believe God want to do it for you. Well, I did this, and I've been like this a long time. But God, out of the multitude, the Lord sees you. He sees you. You're that certain man. You're that certain woman that he sees. So I want to encourage you today to know, and I want you to begin to believe that this is your season, and God is about to bring a change into your life. I speak that over your life. The very thing that's been carrying you, I decree over your life that you are going to get up, you're going to take up your bed, the very thing that's been carrying you, and you're going to begin to walk. You're going to begin to walk out of depression. You're going to begin to walk out of discouragement. You're going to begin to walk out of poverty because God is going to give you the ability to obtain wealth. You're going to walk out of the sickness and the infirmity that you call your own. How many times have you said, my high blood pressure or my diet? It is not yours. It don't belong to you. Jesus died to set you free. So don't call it yours. Whatever ailment that you've been dealing with for a long time, whatever situation you've been dealing with for a long time, it is not yours. The enemy has done this. So if you want to be delivered, stop saying it's yours. So we're going to believe as I close that this is your season. People of God, this is your time to come into the fullness of the Lord, to come into the ability of God in your inability. My God, God sees you and he wants to bring deliverance into your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Again, we bless you and we honor you, Lord God, for this word. We thank you, Lord God, for the the receivers of this word. God, I pray, Lord, that you said something to them that will cause them and call them to take up their bed and walk. To walk out of every demonic force, every demonic stronghold, every mind-binding spirit that has come to keep them trapped and tricked in a place that you didn't call them to be. 38 years is a long time, but we thank you, God, that you have come that we might have life and that life more abundantly. We thank you, Lord God, 
that you are the answer. It's not in our ability to do what we need to do, but it's in our ability to trust and to know who you are. We thank you today. We bless you, we honor you, and we praise you. And we call it done because this is our season. This is the set time that God has appointed for us to move out of the place that we're in. I don't know about y'all, but I see myself moving. Oh, my God. I see myself moving out of some stuff. I see myself moving out of the place that I've been in for a long time. Lord, we thank you for meeting us here today. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your power and your deliverance that's going to stretch far and wide, even on this video, to bring deliverance, healing, and even salvation to those that need you on today. We bless you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. I'm going to bring Apostle back to you guys. Just hold on with us for a few minutes as Apostle comes to give you a few more uh a, a little more information. God bless you. Well, praise God. Wow, for the great word that we have heard from our executive pastor on today. I am so happy she preached a great word to us. And I encourage all of us today, wherever you find yourself in this moment, know that you are not too far and it's not too late. So God is with us. He's helping us. He's keeping us. And we're thankful again for the word of God. Uh, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, or if you're out of fellowship with the Lord, I encourage you uh, to uh, direct message me, uh, Facebook Messenger, inbox on YouTube, however you see in this video. We want to encourage you in that. And then I will pray with you. I will uh, help to walk you through your next steps in giving your life over to the Lord. Or going uh, or you know reestablishing your faith wherever you are at in this moment in time uh, we want to encourage you and we let you know that we love you we love you if you don't have a church home wherever you are we have someone who's on here from India even right now if you don't have a church home and you don't have a pastor uh, we'd love to be a pastor we'd love for you to be part of our faith family and we'd love to uh, help to guide you uh, to your next steps in the Lord and grow in the grace thereof. So uh, you want to join the church, you want to do that, uh, again, uh, direct message me, and we will help you to uh, get established in those principles. And then the uh, last thing is if you would like to give on today, if you would like to give on today, we encourage you to sow your seed uh, into this ministry. This is great ground. This is great ground. As, uh, as she said, uh, that we are emerging out of some things. And as we're emerging out of some things, we're believing God that all the time that we've been in this whole season that we've been in, we've been in basically the entire spring of uh, 2020. Now it's time for us to get ready to emerge and go into some different yes, things. Yes, yes. Different places, different buildings, different things that we God is calling us to do. Yes. And we encourage you, if you want to sow your seed, uh, you can do it by Zelle or PayPal, S-T-W-W-C-C-H-I at gmail.com or uh, by Cash App, dollar sign, all caps, S-T-W-M. And then also uh, by Givelify, you can look us up at uh, Spreading the Word Worship Center in Chicago. You'll see our uh, you'll see our logo on there, and you'll see my name and my wife's name on there as well uh, on the on the Givelify.com or the Givelify app. So all of those things, again, we are we are encouraged, and I want to say to our spreading the word family and those who may have joined us uh, uh, earlier or, or later in the in this in this time of sharing that uh, today will be our last service in the aspect of our uh, 18th year. We're supposed to be celebrating 19 years uh, in ministry uh, today. But of course, with everything that has happened, we can't have a physical service or a time of anniversary or celebration. But we are planning to do some things at a later date. And so we are, uh, we're just, but we wanted to take this time to honor the Lord yes. for allowing yes. us to uh, go through and be in ministry Thank this you, amount Lord. of time. Yes. We're thankful that on July 1st, 2001, he allowed us to have our first service as Spreading the Word Ministries at the time. We had our, we, we've been in ministry 
as far as the, uh, the ministry itself over 20 years, but at the church proper, we started July 1st, 2001. And we're thankful yes. for all of the years that we've had and all of the people that we have come to know, people who have come to join the church, people who have uh, launched churches from our church, yes. people who have grown out and doing different things. And we're excited to see their now and their next. And we're excited about what God is doing. And we're excited for those who are even who even remain and who are still with us here at Spreading the Word. And, our, and, the, and, and we're even excited again about those who are to come, those who are, com who are coming to be able to be part of the ministry. So you all have an incredible day. You all have a wonderful time in the Lord. Again, we would encourage you to give on today by Zelle, PayPal, or Cash App, or Giveify. And we just encourage you to do that. Uh, we're growing. God is doing great things in our life. And lastly, uh, please, uh, if you did not get a chance, or if you want to see a rebroadcast of this, this teaching or any of our Bible classes or Sunday services, uh, you can find it on my YouTube page. That is Bishop Jeff Holiday, H O L L I D A Y. Please go and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll be notified when the videos are uploaded and different things like that. So you guys be encouraged. Have a great day. We'll talk on Wednesday night. God bless you all. Bye-bye for now.